now we will study classification of solids classification of solids solids can be broadly classified into two categories one is crystalline solids and another one is amorphous solid now we will study first the crystalline solids the substitute the substances whose constituent particles the constituent particles can be either atoms or molecules or ions are arranged in a definite geometrical pattern in three dimensional space are called crystalline solids the regular arrangement of the constituent particles extends throughout the three dimensional network of the crystal so they are say these substances are said to have long range order long range order these substances are said to have long range order as they have definite geometric pattern in three dimension in long range they are also known as true solid true solids the examples of crystalline solids are iodine copper sulfate copper sulfate crystal zinc sulfide etc these are the examples of crystalline solids next is amorphous solid
the substances whose constituent particles are not arranged in regular arrangement in regular arrangement are known as amorphous solid. Amorphous solid. Amorphous is a Greek word. Greek meaning of the word amorphous is no form. So we can say the regular arrangement regular arrangement of the constituent particles are not extended are not extended throughout the three dimensional network of the crystal So, they are said to have short range order, short range order. It actually extends to a few angstrom only, few angstrom. Now, the next points of amorphous solid. Amorphous solid have a tendency to flow like a liquid to flow very slowly, very slowly like a liquid. Due to this property, amorphous solid 
is also known as pseudo solids they are also known as pseudo solids or super cooled viscous liquid super cooled viscous liquid now we will discuss isotropic and anisotropic properties that is isotropic and anisotropic property isotropic properties the substances which have the same physical properties such as electrical conductivity thermal conductivity refractive index mechanical strength etc in all direction in all direction in all directions in space are called isotopic substances isotropic substances and this property is known as isotropy the opposite of this property is known as anisotropy and the substances which have anisotropy are known as anisotropic substances so we can define the substances 
which have which not have the same physical properties in all directions in space are called anisotropic substances and this property is known as anisotropy let us take an example nacl sodium chloride we can draw the two dimensional structure of sodium chloride in making measurement of any of the physical properties in different direction the particles which fall on the way are not same if we take any measurement in this direction and also if we take any measurement in this direction the particles arranged are different so we can say crystalline solids are anisotropic because in making measurement in different direction here is in ab direction and also in cd direction the particles which fall on the way are not same as a result they show different property along different direction now the characteristics of crystalline solid crystalline solid show regular geometry why because they have orderly arrangement of their atoms crystalline substances shows sharp melting point now this sharp melting point is due to strong and similar attractive force throughout the crystal lattice i have told you they are anisotropic in nature number 4 this is an important characteristics crystalline solids crystalline solids
gives a clean cleavage with a sharp edge tool with a sharp edge tool but this is not true for amorphous solid as it gives irregular cleavage amorphous substances gives an irregular cleavage irregular cleavage now some important points from this portion first one glass window panes of very old buildings are found to be slightly thicker at the bottom than at the top that is glass window panes of very old building are found to be slightly thicker at the bottom then at the top now why as i have told you that glass is an amorphous solid glass is an amorphous solid which have properties similar to that of liquid which have properties similar to that of liquids it flows down very slowly it flows down very slowly due to gravitational force and hence make the bottom portion slightly heavier slightly thicker another important point is that we can change 
amorphous solid into crystalline solid amorphous solid into crystalline solids by heating the amorphous solid to above its melting point and then gradually decreasing its temperature to normal temperature that is by gradual cooling in daytime glass window get seated and in the night it gets cool periodically it gets cooled periodically as a result crystals are found to a small extent and the window panes found it is better to write formed crystals are formed to a very small extent and the window panes get starbid for very old building Another important point is that high purity glass has a very important property. to form a fiber to form a fiber this property is used this property is used for making optical fiber which are widely used which are widely used nowadays number 4 we have to know two terms first one is polymorphism polymorphism
now what is polymorphism the existence of a particular substance in more than one in more than one crystalline forms is called polymorphism we can take example of calcium carbonate CaCO3 it exists in two forms one is calcite calcite and another is aragonite if the existence of a particular substance if the substance is an element then it is known as allotropes and the property is known as allotropy so we can define allotropy as the existence of a particular element in more than one crystalline form is called allotropy and different forms are known as allotropes carbon can exhibit the properties carbon show allotropy in diamond and also in graphite that is diamond and graphite are allotropes of carbon similarly another important definition is isomorphism isomorphism now what is isomorphism the existence of two or more crystalline solids having similar chemical composition in the same crystalline form or structure in the same crystalline form or structure is called isomorphism we can take example of Na3PO4 and Na3 ASO4 
these are isomorphs to each other we will study classification of crystalline solid classification of crystalline solid solids in classification of crystalline solid solids are classified according to the nature of intermolecular forces operating in them that is crystalline solids can be classified depending upon the nature of intermolecular forces operating in them operating in them into five types first one is molecular crystalline solid molecular crystalline solids as the name suggests the constituent particles are molecules so we can write these are crystalline substances these are crystalline sub solids or substances in which the constituent particle in which the constituent particle are molecules good examples of molecular solids are iodine now these molecular solids are of three types these are of three types Non-polar molecular crystalline solids, non-polar molecular solids or crystalline solids. B. Polar molecular crystalline solids. and C hydrogen bonded molecular solids
first one the non polar molecular crystalline solids or non polar molecular solids the molecules are held together by weak london forces so they are generally soft they have generally low melting point that is in normal state they are either liquid or gaseous they do not conduct electricity as there is no free electron in the system i have also told the example of molecular solid is iodine molecule solid i2 solid co2 next one is polar molecular crystalline solid or polar solid these comprise of molecules of substances formed by polar covalent bonds polar covalent bonds solid hcl solid so2 are few examples of polar molecular solids they have relatively higher bonding forces or stronger bonding forces that is relatively higher dipole dipole forces of attraction next one is hydrogen bonded molecular crystalline solid or hydrogen bonded molecular solid in hydrogen bonded molecular solids the molecules of such solid contains hydrogen bond contains hydrogen bond the example of hydrogen bonded molecular solids are solid h2 solid nh3 etc the next one is atomic crystalline solids atomic crystalline solids as the name suggest these crystalline substances must contain atoms as they are constituent particles so the constituent particles are atoms example of atomic crystalline solids are
solid helium solid neon etc number 3 ionic solids Ionic solids mainly consist of positively and negatively charged ions. Positively and negatively charged ions. So Coulombic attraction force Coulombic attraction force is operating in between the different solid molecules. That is, these ionic solids are held together each other by Coulombic force of attraction. So they are hard. They have high melting point. They conduct electricity and heat. in their molten state or in solution next one is covalent or network solid covalent or network solid Here the constituent atoms or molecules are held each other by continuous system of covalent bond throughout the crystal throughout the crystal in this way they form giant molecules the properties of this network solids are they are hard in nature they have directional properties as covalent bond also have directional nature they are poor conductor of heat and electricity that is why they are also used as insulator the examples of covalent or network solids are diamond graphite here 
I forget to give examples of ionic solid. The examples of ionic solids are NaCl, KCl, KNO3, etc. The last one is metallic solid. Metallic solids. The constituent particles are held together by metallic bond. Now that are metallic bond. When metal releases its electron, it forms cation. This elect attraction between cation and electron mainly constitute metallic bonds. That is the attractive force between the electron and the cation formed from metal are the main reason for metallic bond. The theory behind the metallic bond is electron C model. That is the electron C model. Metallic bond can be easily explained with the help of electron C model. They are also hard Sometimes they are also soft, as example sodium. They are good conductor of electricity and heat. They show sometimes color. Common example of metallic crystalline solids are common metal as example nickel, copper, etc.